Well, I'm Javi Fernandez. I'll be talking about a real case of uh, API driven startup. Um, first of all, thank you for coming and uh, for. Uh, I'm, 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 it's a huge pleasure to be sharing this uh, stage with uh, these great speakers. Uh, but I'll be quick because I wanted to uh, explain to you a lot of things. So uh, uh, who am I? Um, I'm a computer science engineer. Um, after graduating, I started to freelance for a big tech consultancy firm. So that pretty mean uh, developing projects, boring projects for big clients. While doing this, I started also to um, well, I, I created a little uh, s a small web development boutique, and there I, I, I started to create like web applications, mobile applications, APIs for clients across the globe. But I always had this need to focus myself on, on building a, a shiny product. Okay, so I had, I explained you this because I, I really wanted to build a product and not projects for another client. So enough about me, uh, who are you? Uh, are you interested in, in building a product? Uh, are you interested in the role of an API in, in building a product? Um, I hope you do. I, I certainly am. And, and I was at this same conference last year. Uh, and I learned a lot of things. So I, I, I really recommend you not to only attend the talks, but also to chat with the speakers, because you, 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 you'll gain a lot of insight uh, from their knowledge. So this talk, um, I'll talk about a lot, a lot of things, about front-end technology, uh, back-end technology. APIs, uh, the role of APIs in building a product, but what I will really be doing is talking about building a product uh, with a strong API driven approach in the context of a startup. Okay, so uh, let me be clear. I mean, a product is, 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 is pretty obvious what is, is uh, an, an article that you manufacture in order to sell to clients. So it's not a project, it's not a thing that you build every time a new client comes in. It's, it's, it's something that you build and then you sell to a lot of clients. Okay. What is not that obvious is what is uh, an API driven approach. Uh, there's not a clear definition for that. Uh, what I think it is is that you have like the API is like core in your process. The API is key in, in, uh, in the development of your product. The API shapes your product, okay? Um, and in the context of a startup, uh, this, in, in these talks, um, I'm hearing a, a lot about maybe bigger companies like Matteo was talking before about 200 engineers. Uh, when we talk about startups, we're talking about little resources. Maybe it's two developers team, four developers team. You have no time, and you must be very, very, very agile when facing changes, OK? Because you may have this great idea of your product, and, but when, when, when reality comes into, into, the, into the game, it can hit you in the face and, and tell you, OK, you need to change this. You need to, to pivot this, this concept that you heard a lot like, pivot, uh, changing, OK? Um, so uh, this talk is whole, is, is, the whole talk is based on, on, on the experience we had, our team, in, in uh, building this product, OK? So what is this product? Loyal Guru is a, a platform, is a loyalty um, customers online platform uh, for, re for the retail industry, OK? So we have, we've got like kind of a consumer mobile application for the consumer, where you can store your digital loyalty cards, where you, you, you have like a coupon wallet. But there's also a business side of it in which um, um, the retail owner can build campaigns and deploy the campaigns across different channels. So SMS, mail, push notifications, OK? Why, why I'm telling you this is because um, uh, when, when dealing with a product like this, you're dealing with different things, OK? We have in the consumer side, we have a mobile application, a web application. For the company side, we have, uh, for the managers, a little web application that, um, for, for, uh, in order to build these campaigns, I told you before. Uh, we are offering also a mobile application for the staff inside every store, every single store. Also, web application. You get the idea of, of the complexity that comes with it, OK? Uh, also, we, we integrate our solution with uh, ERPs, with point of sales. And every, every, every agent is connected to the API, OK? So we are strongly API-driven. Uh, so 
building a product today, uh, you need to deal with a lot of things. So if you think uh, maybe bigger products like Dropbox, Twitter, Facebook, um, you, you need a consumer application. You may need to integrate yourself with e-commerce. You may need to, to have some widgets in order to show your latest tweets or whatever. So uh, when you're a startup and you're starting, given your first steps, it can really become uh, overwhelming. I mean, um, there's a lot of agents. There's a lot of things to do. So um, I'll try to give you some tips that um, take, take the whole talk as, as, as tips, not as uh, absolute truths, because it's the, the knowledge we've gained in this last year, OK? Um, so first thing, I, uh, all of you know what's a monolithic app? Um, well, let me, let me read for you this. Uh, it's a single tired software application in which the user interface and data access code are combined into a single program from a single platform. For my taste, there are too many singles here. Too many single, too many, um, too many things that do not resonate with the microservice approach, with the modular approach. Uh, so the first tip is to always avoid monolithic apps from the start. Okay. So um, I need to, to to emphasize from the start because um, a lot of Popular frameworks these days, Rails or uh, Django or, well, Django not that much, but do not encourage you to, to have this uh, API driven approach, okay? Do not really encourage you to do this. And when you are trying to, to, to have this API driven approach and working with these frameworks, you feel that you are stepping out a bit of the real uh, workflow of that frameworks. But that's okay. Uh, I think I recommend 95% of the times an, an API driven approach. Uh, and, and I'll show you in the next slides, okay? So let's talk about a common product scenario, okay? Uh, we have the, the API in the middle, we have, we have a, a client, let's say a web application, uh, an admin back office, we have a mobile application, we need to integrate our system with a certain th third party. Uh, so let's talk about how. how how these days you can build an API, okay? Um, the programming language depends on the, on, on the problem you want to solve. Uh, these days, pretty much every language, even, even Haskell, offers you ways to have a good RESTful framework. Um, but I would like to do a quick demo. I don't know, how many of you know Sales.js? Sales.js, okay. Sales.js is a Node.js framework that um, we don't use it, okay, but for, 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 for illustrate purposes, I think it's really neat because, well, with, with uh, really a couple of lines, you are uh, able to, uh, let me see if I can show you, yeah, okay. With a couple of lines, you really can build an API, okay? So let's build an API. Uh, for the AP days, okay? So uh, we've created the project, and let's build an endpoint uh, it's, uh, okay. for speakers. For the speakers. Ah, I know, okay. I need to. Let's build an API for the speakers. Okay, we've got now with two lines of code. We've created a fully fledged RESTful API. Okay, you can do create operations, you can read, you can update, you can delete, you can do a lot of things. So uh, we will kickstart the um, the application we've just created, and uh, we. I have some snippets here. Let's do um, a post. You can see here um, we are doing a, a post HTTP call with some JSON data. We are we are adding one speaker and, and to the endpoint we just created. Okay, so that's it. We've we've added one speaker. We we've got the the, the REST API working. Okay, and let's add another one. Uh, uh, Okay, Bruno Pedro, another one. Uh, let's add another speaker. And with this, I'm trying to tell you how easy it is to build an API for testing purposes or for whatever you want. And 
then you can go to your browser and see what 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 happened, what really happened. Uh, and we've got here or, or three speakers or or, or API or API is working. Even even uh, we can, uh, for example, not just cr the, the basic CRUD operations, but we can also find. Uh, let's find. You can see here. Uh, okay, find all the speakers where the name contains clap. Okay, so here we go. So. Uh, Yeah. OK. So uh, another thing to keep in mind when you are building an API, stick to REST always, please. Or, or at least, well, not, I don't know always, but I think it's a really good choice. Secure your connection, HTTPS. Um, offer a versioning, OK? If you don't do it, you will get into trouble. Um, worry about cache. Um, to keep in mind, hypermedia. I think. Uh, well, I, I won't speak about hypermedia because you 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 had all, the whole morning, but it's very interesting. I'll let you hear a couple of resources. One is a guide uh, from Heroku engineer about uh, how to build and and to a lot of things related to to building APIs. And uh, once you've got your API, uh, once you once you build your API, you need to deploy this API. You need to have this API in production, in, in staging, on, in, in, in whatever environments uh, did you have. Uh, and as a startup, I, I really recommend you not to uh, manage your servers. Okay, so there's plenty of, of, of pass system, of, of, of platform as a service that will help you a lot when dealing with this kind of things. So um, I personally recommend Heroku. Uh, why? Why this with this platform as a service? I mean, one line, JIT, push, Heroku master. And you've deployed your application. If you have several machines, you've deployed your application in these diverse machines. Um, scale. OK, um, for example, we, we, we had a couple of weeks ago a big client that was coming on board. And that means um, a lot of uh, API calls. We were, um, we were in the need to scale uh, or, or API. And with one line, you can scale from one machine to four machines, or to 10 machines. And the code is replicated in the different machines. And you don't have to worry about anything, OK? And um, uh, forget about maintenance, upgrades. I don't know. Uh, how many of you did, did you hear about um, Herdbleed book? OK. Herdbleed book was a book that, that was a seriously uh, vulnerability in OpenSSL. And um, if, you, if, you, if you deal with your servers, you, you've, you've got to deal with these kind of things. You've, you've gonna, you have to patch your, your server. You have to do certain things that when you are working with a pass, uh, you, you don't need to do it. Okay? But anyway, if you are um, worried about your security, privacy, or whatever, you can always build your own pass in your own machines. Uh, companies like Days offer a, 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 a product that's called Doku that it, it lets you create a mini Heroku uh, in your own machine. So. You, you get that neat workflow of, of scaling, well, scaling, no, but deploying, you get, you get that workflow. And even if you don't want to build your own API, you don't want to deploy it, you don't want to, to, to at first take care of this, you can use a BAS. You can use a backend as a service. Um, backend as a service is, a, is a, I don't know if you guys know Parse. Parse was a company that was acquired by Facebook uh, a year ago. You can, uh, with certain steps and, and configuring some parameters, you, you have a fully fledged REST uh, API, uh, authentication, you have, you've got a lot of things. Uh, it's, uh, it, uh, see. Yeah, it's very lim limiting sometimes, but it can help you uh, to shape what could be your near future API. Okay? So enough about building your own API. Uh, we were talking about this ecosystem in which the API is at the center, but we've got the clients consuming the API, OK? Um, in our case, uh, a client is a web, um, a web for the uh, manager. In the case of Dropbox, it could be the whole website in which you create folders and, and upload your uh, pictures. Eight minutes only? Ah, OK. <laughs> uh, so I recommend you, uh, when creating your front-end applications, 
It seems obvious, but it's not. No server side on your front end code. These days you can do a lot with JS frameworks. Okay, so there are, there are frameworks like Angular, Ember, uh, Backbone that encourage you to have this huge separation between API and, and, uh, and front end clients. We're talking about REST APIs here. Angular offers a library, well, not Angular. Uh, there's a, an, a, a library called REST Angular that lets you uh, interact with REST APIs in a very easy manner, smooth. When dealing with front end applications, uh, manage your dependencies. Uh, Bower is awesome for this. One line, and you have your, this library that I was talking, REST Angular, one line, and you have it as a dependency in your project. So it encourages you to, uh, it encourages you to, to, to have modularization. The same as Heroku, there's like other platforms for static hosting, DeepShot. DeepShot, with one line, you can deploy your uh, front end client uh, with SSL capabilities, with smart cache. So it's a neat thing to do. And if possible, uh, build your front end apps as dumb clients. I want as much logic business in my API and not in my front end client. So, what is building a uh, front end client as a um, as a dumb client is, for example, one thing would be API driven forms. Uh, I'll tell you, in, in, in our consumer mobile web application, we have a feature in which a, a consumer can create a profile with a company, can create a, a digital loyalty card in a company. So every company asks for different data. So you've got different forms, one form different per every company that you've got, okay? So you get um, forms like this one. Uh, I don't know if you see it pretty, pretty well. Okay, a simple form in which a company asks for zip code or birth date, okay? But things can get a bit messier and, whoa. <laughs> and uh, that's, for example, a kid's clothing company, okay? A kid's clothing company is asking you for dynamic data. Uh, it's asking you for the name of your child, of, your, of, of one of your ch ch children, the birth date. Uh, some data, and you even, uh, I think it's my computer. <laughs> and, uh, and you've got to deal also with validating these fields, okay? So uh, you cannot deploy a mobile application every time a client comes in. So uh, how we solve this, uh, there's uh, a need in the library that's called Angular Schema Form that given a uh, JSON schema, you can build automatically a, a form Okay, and you can, you can build automatically a form that validates against this JSON schema. So you say, okay, let's, that, that's a call for, for or, or API, a request. Company three, give me uh, the, the data that I need to create a new profile. And, and the, the API gives you all this data. And with a couple of lines in my controllers, in JS and Angular, you can build uh, these forms that you, that you saw, okay? Uh, Timing, okay. Okay, so uh, we talk about clients, about the API, uh, mobile applications. These days you've got a lot of options. Sometimes responsive won't do the job, okay. Um, we've got pretty, uh, we've, we've had a pretty good experience with Ionic framework. I, I don't know how many of you guys know Ionic. Okay. Um, Ionic is based on Angular. It allows you to have one code base in, in, uh, in, 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 in and have like uh, reach a, a wide scope of devices, iOS, Android, Blackberry, Windows Phone, um, and all, all, all with Angular and share, sharing maybe modules that you are using on your web applications, okay? So I'll go quick because I think I'm running out of time. No, no, you're good. Yeah, I'm good? Four more minutes? Okay. Uh, I was preparing, when I had a demo for you, but I think I'll, I'll keep it for the end. Um, so, one very important thing, at least in, in our experience, is that your API uh, will be used by, by third parties, okay? So um, in, in our case, we needed to integrate our, our, our product with ERPs, with point of sales. Uh, so we needed a really good documentation, okay? Um, uh, and also we needed to evangelize some people about REST APIs, about APIs, uh, we needed to talk to the ET guy, the IT guy, or the developers in-house and uh, explain them how to use these things. But we are quite lucky these days because I don't know how many of you know 
soap based services or, or WSDL services? I, I, some, some of you, okay. Um, some years ago, they were very popular. They, 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 they are popular now also. But um, if you've got to deal with these things nowadays, I think like, it's, it's a bit like this. I mean, okay, bring, bring, bring someone uh, with a big brain that, that knows how to deal with um, huge documents, uh, specifying how, how I could call the, 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 the methods of the API, okay? No, jokes apart, I mean, you, 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 could, you could download libraries and you could use a lot of stuff, but nothing beats a plain HTTP call, okay? Even my grandma, my grandma here is doing an HTTP call, okay? So she, she, she has this, this, this browser and, and is issuing some get calls to our API. Um, so we've talked about everything uh, of this little product scenario, and I would like to end with, with, uh, with this thing, okay? Customizations. Um, sometimes uh, you've got your product, but uh, that's not enough. Let's face it, when you want to build a product, you need clients. Getting first clients is hard. And you need first clients to get more clients. So sometimes, uh, when you have this code base, with this controlled code base, you start to see something like, okay, um, do you offer a wide label solution of your product? Uh, or even worse, um, do you um, think that you could change this little thing and have this little patch for me in order to, if you do it, I think I will get on board in your product. And sometimes you need that client because it, 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 maybe, it maybe means that you are doing three times your income per month or four times. I mean, it's, it's, it's an important thing depending on your product. If you, if you can afford this kind of things, uh, I think you, 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 you should do it, but you, you feel that your product is going to suffer, okay? Yeah. I feel when, when, when these things happen, I feel like, okay, um, this is a great potential client, but I think that uh, my product is going to suffer a lot, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it, it's a good one. Um, but what, what I'm trying to tell you is that if you've got an API driven approach, uh, these kind of things are a little bit better, okay? So uh, you can build an exclusive endpoint for your API. You can fork a client. And I don't like, this, I don't like to, to, to deviate my product, but sometimes you, you've got to do it, OK? So I think API-driven approach um, helps you in that kind of thing. So uh, let me end with this. I think that uh, having an API-driven approach comes with uh, huge benefits. You can separate your teams. You can. Uh, have separated deployment cycles. You can deploy your API while, while you don't touch your clients or vice versa. You can deploy your front end clients and, and, and don't touch your API. Uh, you can scale uh, much better. You can, as I told you with Heroku, you can scale your API or scale your, your front end clients just with some uh, one line comment. You've got this uh, strong separation of concerns uh, that I think that. Uh, well, it's, it's really nice and really aligned with microservices, modularization, because I've been talking about an API, but you can have APIs. I mean, you can, the, the, it, it is, it's transparent for the end user, but you can have a lot of APIs with a common interface. So that's, that's the main line of, of this whole thing. The API is the heart of your product, not a feature. So thank you very much. Uh, Hope it was not too boring. Yeah, thank you. It was a it was a great wrap up of all the day, you know, discussions and everything. Thank you. So thank you very much. So and you made some personal choices, like uh, for example, API for documentation or the framework you used. But thank you for sharing exactly how you did it. Because, okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. So uh, we have time for a few questions. True that it's it's killing, right? <laughs> so um, maybe you wanted to make the the Ionic demo, right? I've, I've, I've got the time. Yeah. Yeah. So are you okay for the Ionic demo? Who know Ionic? Some people. Who who is against Ionic demo? <laughs> okay. So yeah, if you if you want, okay. for example. So what what I would do is. Uh, 
just building a, a mobile application on top of the API we just created before, it's the speaker's endpoint and the whole stuff. In less than two minutes? Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, the first thing. Um, okay. no, we just need. Okay, now it's good. Yeah? Okay. Magic. The first thing is that we'll need to, to make this API uh, cross uh, course compatible, okay? So, mm, this point is not interesting, okay? So, I'll, I'll do it pretty quick. That's not the interesting part. Okay. So, okay, we've got this. Um, I don't know if you see it. We've got this API running, API running, okay, with the speakers. And um, building an, 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 a mobile client for this API is as easy as doing this Yonic start uh, API days mobile. Oh, ah no, I, I don't I don't have internet connection. Barcelona. Suspense. Yeah, it's more than more than one minute. Pero no no me coge. Vale. You can talk about virtual APIs with Paul just here from Smart Bear. Okay, so as easy as Ionic start API is mobile. Okay. And it, it, it downloads uh, like a little template. Okay. Um, we go inside or no. We go inside our little cr recent created project. And we, well, we, we've got a fully functional mobile application now running. You can see it here, okay? Ionic Serve, and you see the, this is a, well, this is a, a mobile application, a blank, but it's working, and you can wrap it in Cordoba, and you can publish it in a store, okay? But let's do the interesting part of it that's calling our recent uh, API, okay? So, in less than one minute? Wow. No. <laughs> Okay. It's, no, it's more than one minute. Uh, okay. So. Uh, uh, okay. We'll add the HTTP resource. Here, this is a, a, a controller in Angular. We add this resource here, this uh, sector. And now we'll make a easy HTTP call to our API. So you can see here that we are calling here localhost speakers, <laughs> and we are loading this data here, OK? Uh, so we are now going to the view. We'll we had some data in our API. We had the name of the speaker. We had the age of the speaker. So we'll show it on our view. And OK, so let's, um, <laughs> OK. Don't forget to, to support Sublime Text. <laughs> to, to. Wait a minute. Sorry, but so. 
we go to restart or ionic application. Serve. Oh. Well, it's not working. <laughs> But it should, OK. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what's not working now, but with the small changes in, 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 in this uh, blank application, you reach to do this code to the API and show your results on, on the view, OK? So that's it. Thank you. <laughs>